All right, let's take a look at chapter 21, Neoclassicism. Neoclassicism was a style of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. It uh, actually was a reaction. As many art styles are reactions to the whatever was popular before, and artists, of course, are oftentimes leading the way into the next way of uh, taking a look at the world. <clears throat> the French Revolution was a big deal going on, and so the artists that we're gonna see here are, in fact, uh, French. The, the, um, the zeitgeist of neoclassicism was this reaction against the frivolous Rococo paintings and political art that reached back to ancient Rome and Greece. And it was the art of Napoleon's court. The primary artist of this particular time period and style was Jacques-Louis David. This is his most famous painting. It's on page 383 in your textbook and it is entitled The Oath of the Horatii, H-O-R-A-T-I-I. It's a story from ancient times about two families at war with each other, the Horatii and the Curatii. Uh, Horatius is the father here in the center of this painting, um, and we see um, uh, the men getting ready to bear arms, take these swords to, um, uh, to vanquish the other family. On, this, on the right hand side, we see the complexity of, and look at the lines here that are all soft and moving, of the women in the painting, as well as some children in the background. And the reason being that one of them is the wife of the other family, so there's going to be a problem here uh, in that regard. Now, if we take a look at this painting, I'm gonna go back to some early information. Look at uh, the balance in this painting. It is uh, approximate symmetry. It's divided pretty equally with these columns here. And neoclassicism, as I said, goes back to ancient Roman times. So we have Roman costumes on the figures, um, and they're placed in this very shallow architectural place, and they're like frozen statues. Remember when we saw um, uh, previous things, we saw lots of motion and movement. Not so much here, it's just uh, a time, uh, a time Frozen. I said that already. I can't think of another word to say about it. In any event, this is a very meaningful painting. Now, uh, one of the things that's amazing about this is if you get to see it, and it is in the loop, you cannot see a single brush stroke. The surface of this painting is so amazingly clean and clear. And Jacques Louis David was a very influential artist in Paris at the time, who was influencing a lot of other artists. And so he was he was a big deal, to say the least. Um, uh, we'll step away to get the next image just for a moment. And here's one. Okay. So, uh, his other, when this is on an ID, it's a giveaway. Uh, David, uh, it looks like David, I know, but it, it's French after all. Um, uh, Marat. Uh, Marat was uh, somebody who was a revolutionary. And he was an actual figure in history, and he had a skin condition, which meant that he had to spend much of his uh, life in, in, the, in salt baths and other curative uh, bath stuff. But he was also a, a writer and uh, an instigator of political stuff. Now, he was uh, murdered by Charlotte Corday as she came into his apartment and stabbed him as he was in the bathtub. And it was a very compelling uh, painting to get a political message out. Propaganda was an aspect of neoclassicism, and that's for sure. And it, uh, it attempted to promote um, the, uh, the power of Napoleon and his followers. And this is certainly a powerful emotional example of it. I also think um, compositionally it's quite odd and unusual because we have all this uh, focus of attention over here with the face, of course, offset in some ways but this incredible amount of negative space here, which I suppose empowers um, the foreground here, but I, I've always found it to be an awkward composition. But that's just me as an artist. Okay, well I almost left this painting out, sorry. It, this is really complicated as we're trying to do this, especially without you guys all out there uh, waiting for my next comment in any event. This is a portrait, of course, you probably recognize Napoleon, even if I hadn't 
uh, made the big giveaway with that. This is a portrait by Jacques Louis David. It's on display in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. And in terms of propaganda, notice a little candle almost burned all the way down in the background. You know, that was the whole suggestion that Napoleon, oh, he's up all night, he's tweeting his butt off, he's, uh, well, I don't know about his butt off, but anyway, he would be tweeting if he knew about tweeting, I suppose. And look at the clock. I mean, it's wee, wee hours of the morning, and all this is done for show and for this power of this dictator named Napoleon, that guy. So Jacques-Louis David certainly did uh, a great job on this portrait of Napoleon. The only other neoclassical artist that we uh, are going to take a look at and learn from is this. This is Ang, I-N-G-R-E-S, Jean-Auguste Ang. It's a, kind of a hard name, especially when you see it spelled I-N-G-R-E-S, Ang. Uh, I've heard of anger, but anyway, um, most people say Ingress when they take a look at it, and that, I get that, that's okay. This obviously is that same guy, Napoleon. So, um, Ang was a student of David's, um, and in some ways he, he even excelled his, his teacher, um, certainly. And um, this is a portrait of Napoleon on page 387 in your textbook. And it's one of only two paintings that I'm going to show you and expect for you to remember uh, from this time period by Ang. And the other one is this one, Grand Odalesque. And an Odalesque, O-D-A-L-I-S-Q-U-E, an Odalesque was a Turkish uh, slave girl, a harem girl. And uh, this painting is at the Louvre. And it is a really interesting uh, foreshortening stuff going on here. But if you notice, it's been, it's been uh, studied a lot, and she has three extra vertebrae at least, um, so she's quite elongated, even though um, we are not sure at all if that was intentional or just uh, naivete on the part of, of Ang. So 387 for Napoleon's portrait, and 388 for the Grand Odalesque. And that's it for Neoclassicism in chapter 21. We'll be right back to chapter 22 in just a few.